Hello and welcome to The Real Hustler. My name is James and in today's show, we're gonna be looking at that, the pros and cons of blockchains. We'll start off by exploring the benefits before then looking at the early adopters and then the challenges that they face. So come and join me and let's kick off the show. So like I mentioned, I want to start off really by exploring the benefits of blockchain. Number one is trust. And I've mentioned previously about the fact that you can have peer-to-peer -peer connectivity in the blockchain. And what it actually enables is peer-to-peer -peer in a way where people don't actually have to know each other or even trust each other because the blockchain is what facilitates that transaction. So that means that not only do you not have to know the other person, or have any level of trust with that person, the actual blockchain initiates the levels of trust through everybody because of how the blockchain works. We'll go through that more in more detail, exactly how that trust mechanism works. But all you need to know for right now is the blockchain firstly enables the level of trust that without it wouldn't be possible. Two, enables decentralized structures. This enables real-time data sharing to happen between businesses because of the level of trust means that otherwise these businesses would have had to build up a partnership, a sense of trust with each other. But because the blockchain enables the trust, you can now have a decentralized part where the trust is built on the blockchain itself, allowing suppliers and distributors, among others, to share data and distribute while reducing points of weakness. Number three, improved security and transparency. Now the blockchain, how it works, enables you to record records within the block that it's created at that time. Because of the hexes that are created around it, allows it to be stored in a secure manner that can't be altered very easily, or if at all, without actually affecting the chain, created an unalterable record, which is an end-to-end -end encryption. This means that we protect against fraud and stopping any unauthorized transactions or activities. Four, it reduces costs. There's a lot of actually money spent on the security, especially cloud network. Now, while that security itself is good, it's still not impenetrable. And is blockchain? Well, the argument at the moment says that it is near impossible. Not impossible, because nothing is ever impossible, but very improbable because of how the blockchain works. More of which we do need to talk about later. But for now, let's just assume that we know what the blockchain does and how that works, and that what it also does, in because of the secure way that in which it works, it is less cumbersome, which means that there's less auditing needed and there's full transparency with that, which along the way reduces the costs but also at the same time increases the speed of which transactions can happen at. Which brings me on to the fifth one. The fifth one is actually speed itself. Yeah. Because we're now eliminating intermediaries, what that also means is we're taking another person out of the chain. That means out of the actual process, the supply chain. And when we're doing that, that speeds up the whole process of the transaction itself. Meaning that you don't have a third party having to help transact that transaction. It just happens between the two parties, making it much faster than the conventional methods. Number six. So the transparency and visibility of the blockchain data. So with regards to the visibility and traceability, what we have now is because like anything with regards to into the blockchain, we have the full transparency and visibility of the ledger, allowing us to actually see where things have lived in the past. So when we've looked at NFTs, we were able to see the previous owners who own that NFT. Now, if we also applied that into the blockchain, what we'd be able to do is we would be able to know which countries it's passed through because every owner would sign off that they've received it and that would then show within the ledger. So now you'd be able to prove that if an organic product was definitely organic, it would have had to come from an organic farm. 
then if you wanted to say that that it was carbon neutral you'd be able to prove that by looking through the ledger and showing that it was offset against different fuels or various different other methods of which it takes in order to become carbon neutral and that brings us on to number seven immutability now with regards to this this ensures transactions can't be altered or changed very much like previously we mentioned on benefit free we talked about the improved security now the same thing applies with immutability because transactions can't be changed it means that now we know that a transaction happens it, it must have happened because we've got that real sense of trust the blockchain helps us protect and know that the, that transaction has happened and hasn't been altered and if it has been altered we would know because the chain would have been broken number eight now now we come down to you as an individual personal protection of your own data if you can imagine individual control of your data fully imagine like online we hear about facebook and various different other organizations taking our data and using it in ways that we weren't aware of that will happen because effectively we've handed them our personal data over time and they've created almost a profile of you online that is a persona now with the blockchain what we could now do is you now control your data because if you had the data held in a central location with a full magnitude of your truth you could provide your public key to them and if effectively only provide them the data that you want to provide them you would also be able to limit the amount of time that you could hold on to that data because if they use smart contracts this then allows you to state how long they can have it for what part of the data they can access making it a lot more secure than previously benefit nine tokenization so tokenization we've already talked about it nfts are a form of tokenization what it is is taking our asset our monetary asset that you already have physical money which will be digitally in your bank and actually converting it into a digital cryptocurrency now within that digital cryptocurrency or within that ecoverse of that blockchain then this is where you get your digital assets from referred to as tokenization because now nfts as we all know at the moment they are a collectible mainly but utility is coming more and more through and soon i say soon right now people are starting to use them in utility ways we've already covered one with the ufc but we've also got other examples and i've got one that i want to show you next week which is run by gary v himself and it covers a restaurant that he has recently just set up in new york so listen out for that number 10 innovation like with any industry or any technology loads of innovation is required in order to get the most out of it and there is a lot of innovation that's currently being done around blockchain to really get the best and good uses out of it some industries are looking to start to use it in ways that will allow them to get past some of the difficulties with they've had with tracing being able to geolocate things and various different other things that previously required a lot of level of trust and partnership in order to be able to achieve successfully now every time that happens there's always going to be a level of self-verification or other third-party verification that's required in order to gain that trust now with the blockchain in place potentially that has the ability to actually resolve those issues and that finally brings me back to the actual final place that we're going to go today and that is to actually look at the industries that are involved in looking to adopt it you see blockchain's benefits span industry sectors but some sectors and enterprises are better suited to technology than others businesses that are decentralized by definition have multiple parties that need access to the same data and need a better way to ensure the data has not been tampered with the following are a few examples of industries benefiting from blockchain firstly financial institutions their customers are seeing faster and less costly clearing and settlements healthcare healthcare entities are finding that the blockchain can ensure the security of patient records and to maintain 
patient privacy while also enabling the ability to share a patient's data only as the patient allows. Nonprofits and government organisations. Nonprofits and government agencies have adopted smart contracts and other blockchain based applications to create immutable records that enforce stipulated terms. However, like everything else, there's always challenges to bear in mind. And one of those is around the actual cost of actually implementing blockchain. You've got to bear in mind that when we move on from one technology to another, there's always a cost exchange or value exchange of which you have to go through in order to get the most out of that technology. And blockchain is no different. There's actually a lot of investment that businesses have to do in order to be able to adopt the blockchain. Now, if you bear that in mind as well, and also that it isn't the cheapest in order to set up and facilitate, that's a lot of investment for businesses to actually take on board, which comes with risk. Like any business, they, a business will always want to see a return on investment, ROI, as it's referred to as in their lingo terms. And that return on investment means that a business will always look to be able to make profit from it. Now, until they can actually get to a point where they're able to show the return on investment, that they will not be able to adopt it because they'll become a stumbling block in the same way as until your old phone becomes out of date, you tend to hold on to it. It has a lot of sentimental value. You also know how it works, but there's also a cost exchange. Firstly, your new phone is probably going to cost you in the good regions of near a thousand pounds these days if you wanted, say, an iPhone. However, that always makes it a bit of a stumbling block because then it has to have enough benefits on the new device in order to train you over. And the blockchain is in that stage at the moment where businesses at the moment struggling to be able to see the benefit of taking on the blockchain. Additionally, many blockchains require additional support from other systems and processes to verify that the data being added on the blockchain is accurate. Consider, for example, the blockchain for a supplier management. Companies could use such systems to verify suppliers have paid applicable taxes, but if they are relying on suppliers to confirm that without any external information, then the value of that blockchain solution is weakened. It's the biggest weakness in blockchain today because it assumes that all suppliers have to adhere to the same standards. However, as soon as one of those don't, or there's a slight bit of mistrust in that, then it almost undoes the blockchain. So there needs to be some confirmation of the actual information that's put on the blockchain by a third party. And that adds another complexity because we're trying to decentralize stuff and take out intermediaries. But in some ways, the blockchain says that in order to keep trust, we may sometimes need to verify it with an intermediary. There needs to be some mechanism behind it in order to confirm it. These enterprise uses of blockchain still require some centralization of it. That brings back that question again. Who manages it? If we're trying to decentralize it, then we're actually having to re-centralize some parts of it or come up with some sort of agreement in order to be able to say who will audit it if a breach does occur. Now in the next show, we're gonna look at more at the disadvantages in a bit more detail and explain and dive into them a bit more like we did with the benefits this week. Please do leave your comments below today so that I can understand anything that you found interesting about the show. And if there's anything that you want us to cover in future, other than the things I've said I'm already looking to cover, or validation that those things that you do want me to cover, then comment below and I can then look to feed them for you. If you also want to listen to the show and find out when we are actually putting out the next show, then please do subscribe. Just press the subscribe button, hit the bell, and hey presto, you'll be notified every time that we go live. Thank you for joining me on today's show. I look forward to meeting you again soon. And that's me signing off. Good day and goodbye.